please discuss uh, why this study was conducted. Sure. So, as you know, pelvic organ prolapse is very common, uh, particularly becomes more common as women age. And one of the, the gold standard treatments or the gold standard treatment is surgery. However, a lot of the literature and surgical literature around surgery for pelvic organ prolapse is really centered on younger, healthier women. And so we don't know what happens with older, particularly frail, older um, women with you know, a large amount of comorbidities, how do they fare with this surgery? And remember, this is the type of procedure that we do to improve quality of life. So I think that the bar is really high or should be very high uh, for good outcomes among this, this cohort of women. And what were some of the notable findings from your study and were any of them surprising to you and your co-authors? Yeah, so we basically uh, compared nursing home residents to age and comorbidity matched older community dwelling adults. Um, so again, looking at sort of the oldest, um, most frail populations undergoing this type of surgery. And we found, of course, worse outcomes. And we looked at three main outcomes. So longer hospital length of stay, 30-day uh, complications and one-year mortality, and rates of all of these were quite a bit higher in the nursing home population. And while this isn't surprising, I think it's important to information to add to the literature because a lot of times we look at age and we look at comorbidity for sort of our pre-op clearance and evaluation, and really what this study is showing is that there are factors beyond age and comorbidity that we need to be taking into account when guiding and counseling older adults undergoing surgery. And so this, I think, raises, raises that issue and raises awareness around that issue. What factors do you think may contribute to the worst outcomes observed in nursing home residents undergoing pelvic organ prolapse surgery? Yeah, great question. Um, and while we weren't specifically able to zero in on this, this is really the crux of what the study was about, right? So what factors beyond age and comorbidity that we typically think of um, are contributing to poor outcomes? And I think there's three main things. Um, one is frailty, which is, um, I, I do a lot of research around frailty, and it's one of those difficult to measure things, particularly in claims data. But it's um, pretty well known that all nursing home residents are frail to some extent. So that's one of the main driving factors, I believe. The other things are physical dependency. Uh, so how are individuals doing with their activities of daily living? Um, how much assistance do they need with that? Um, and the other thing is cognitive impairment. Um, so these things are all very common in the nursing home population. Then there are other factors beyond that that are important, such as um, sort of your social dependent, social connectedness, dependency, um, support, et cetera. Do you and your co-authors plan to conduct further research on this topic? And if so, what would its focus be? Yeah, so absolutely. This is sort of the first of um, or the one of many that we're doing. So this, this study focused on surgery around pelvic organ prolapse, but we're also planning to look at procedures done for other quality of life issues around the pelvic floor, uh, the bladder, and the bowels. So we're also going to be looking at surgery for stress urinary incontinence, uh, super pubic tubes for urinary retention, uh, TURPs, transurethral resection of prostate surgeries. A lot of those are done in older adults. We're also looking at some bowel procedures such as hemorrhoids and rectal prolapse. So basically what we wanted to do was look at procedures, like I said, uh, that are done commonly done in older adults. Uh, that are mainly done to improve quality of life. And the real reason for that is um, you know, we want to make sure that patients who are undergoing surgery, particularly for quality of life, are having good functional outcomes, right? Um, that, that, they're, that we avoid operating. We can identify the patients who are going to do well. We can identify the patients, hopefully, who aren't going to do well and guide them along a different path. What is the take-home message for the practicing urologist? 
Yeah, that's a great question. So again, I think really it is, while it is important to look at age and comorbidity, that's only part of the story. We need to be thinking beyond that, particularly in our older adults and thinking about things such as frailty in our surgical decision-making. And I would even go as far as to say that I, we, I think that we should measure frailty in our older adults. Uh, sometimes you might be surprised who is and who is not frail. And I think that that's a very important uh, factor in terms of your outcomes. Is there anything else that you feel our readers should know uh, about uh, your research? Um, just that, um, you know, be beyond the, the frailty piece, which I think is really the most important frailty along with physical dependency and um, cognitive um, insufficiency, I think that these are all important things to consider in older adults. Again, we want to do no harm. We want to avoid surgery in patients who aren't going to do well, um, particularly when we're trying to, we're not doing surgery to save lives, but to enhance lives. We want to make sure that, that we are really doing that. So I just want to really sort of gather awareness among some of those issues.